Welcome to live stream number 89. Today is Wednesday. It is November 8th. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join today's live stream. If you're watching this, you're watching the recording. I haven't quite gotten anybody in uh, the live stream just yet. Thank you so much for taking the time. Don't forget, down in the description area, you will find my email address. Any future topics, click that. Also, if you haven't already, it will mean the world to me if you would hit that subscribe button. Then, if you hit that bell notification next to it, you should get notifications about uh, these live streams. So, and also, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. Today, we're going to talk about sculpting. Um, we're going to talk about how to sculpt up a, a hammer. And we're actually going to get kind of, um, we're going to touch on some important aspects today, I think. Um, first of all, we're going to talk about um, how to convert a standard model into uh, a T-spline, what is what we do inside the sculpting environment. That's something I haven't shown yet. I've always, you know, have a tendency to start out in the sculpting area and then go to the model space, and we talked about that. But what if you want to go the other way? That's important. Um, and we're going to model up this hammer. And the reason we're going to model up a hammer is that, um, hang on. A few weeks ago, when I built this new office, my father-in-law, who's one of these guys who can fix everything, um, he decided that the hammer that I had kind of sucked. So he bought me a new hammer. Supposedly, this is a good American-made uh, kind of hammer. So that was what kind of like gave me the idea to, uh, to let's start modeling. Well, we should maybe start modeling up some tools. So let's jump into uh, to Fusion here. Now, so like I said, normally uh, when you have watched any of the other live streams where we talked about sculpting um we've always talked about like you're starting in this uh in this workspace here the, the clean workspace where we haven't touched anything um but what if you actually have some solid and you want to bring it into uh to the teen t-spline or the sculpting environment here um and lou was actually the one who um who kind of uh sent me an email last night about that and I thought that was something that I hadn't shown and shame on, you know, shame on me. So what we have here is, well, you can see it kind of like have the canvas of, a, of the hammer here. Um, and this is just an image that I grabbed online. Come back to that. Let me turn it off over here on the left. What I did was I used a loft to create something to resemble the handle on, on this part here. And um, if you kind of like have taken CAD 101 with, with 3D modeling, you probably uh, have come across Loft before, at least if you follow these live streams. What I, loved, what I did here was I created three different circles on three different planes, and I used Loft command to make a Loft between them. What gives it a nice, you can see here if I go like right on the side, it's not straight, a straight extrude because this one is a little bit smaller than, than this one, they kind of like gets a nice swoop. But um, if I turn the canvas back on, you can clearly see that uh, the east wing, east wing, is that what it's called? East, east wing hammer handle here has a, uh, a little bit more of a, um, you know, sculpted face that will make it a little bit more nicer to hold in your hand. So. Um, to answer Lou's question, how the heck do we take something that is a solid, a solid body like this and get it into the T-spline environment? There's a couple of different ways you can do it, just if some of, of you guys are already familiar with it. You can uh, right click up here and you can decide not to capture your design history. That's one way to get out of it if you maybe have come across that. That's actually not my favorite, so I'm not even going to show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> my live stream, I can decide what I want to do. Now, what I'm going to do is, let me turn the, the canvas off for a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go right up here and click on Create Form. That's how we get into the uh, sculpting environment. And you get this um, uh, pop-up here that tells you that you're entering the sculpt environment. You can choose to say, don't show me again. I like to have it here. It just sort of reminds me, oh yeah, that's right. I'm going into the sculpting environment. Now be aware of that whatever you're doing in the sculpting environment, don't be, it's not getting captured down here in the history tree. Um, so it's kind of like there's no history in there. 
Um, but And you will see that our solid kind of like became a shadow because it's not T-spline. Well, if you go up to utilities up here and you can go in here and you can convert. If I click on convert, then you will see you get some different options over here. And one of them is B-Rep phase to T-splines, meaning from solid to T-splines or to sculpting. So if I click on that, I can select that solid. And as soon as I do that, you will see that it, it kind of like gets the, the, the lines across here that, um, that tells us that it's, a, it's a, now a, a sculpting or T-spline kind of shell. Uh, you can control how many faces you can add in here. Uh, you have some different options. I, you know, one of my things I think when it comes to working with with T spines, the less entities you have, the easier it is kind of like to work with it. But now with this now, now we can turn the canvas back on. You can go look right on it here, and now I have those tools that you would uh, expect. That if I right click, I can go in and say Edit Form. I can select a point here, and I can start dragging uh, these different forms to kind of get that um, shape of, of the handle here. So uh, I think that this is kind of important because I think that that's actually one of the things that I've kind of missed in my other T-spline uh, kind of videos have been, what if you want to go from you know a model to a T-spline environment? Uh, and you can definitely see here that we can, we can do this here I'm going to select, make sure I get both points at the end here on each side so I can kind of like start manipulating, manipulating this. Now, um, when you're done with it in T-Spline, you will see that right now this is just kind of like a shell. You have a couple of different options how you want to, uh, to handle this. Um, one way to do this is to go in. Um, if you, and the easiest thing is to select the edges first. By the way, if you have never worked or you, you don't get too often into the to the sculpting space. There's a couple of things you gotta remember. If I select left click once, I'm selecting an edge. But if I double click on an edge, it's actually selecting the entire ring. Same thing if I select on a face, once I get a face, if I double click on it, you will see that it select every surrounding faces. So one of the way I can close this is by double clicking. So I select the entire ring around here. And if I go to modify, down in here, there's a lot of different options, but they somewhat all make sense. There's a fill hole. Now, when I did that, you will see that it kind of like collapsed in uh, and closed it off, uh, but there is a maintain crease edges. And if I click on that, you will see that we kind of get closer into where you would expect us to be. Though in this case, just because of the way the algorithms breaks it down, see how it kind of become tear dropped a little bit and that's just there is some different options how you can you can kind of close them up uh, in here uh, but I get this tear drops but this is one way to do it if you do this in both ends I'm not gonna do it but if you did that in both ends and hit finish form um, then you would get a uh, a solid body um, but because I just did it without having them closed. We actually see uh, that it becomes a surface sitting over here. So I have the original body. That is the, so it didn't convert it over. I just kind of like copied it. That's the original body that we started out with. But now we have this, um, this surface that is actually what we created that handle into. Uh, so this is what I just dragged in. Now, of course, the goal is to turn it into a solid uh, in the end. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, when I did the coffee mug uh, a few, I don't know, maybe a, three weeks ago, a month ago or something, I did one of my preferred methods and that's going into the pads workspace, create a pad on each end. So I'm kind of like closing each end off, right click, repeat patch. Um, I closing each end off and then if I highlight the whole thing I can then stitch it together into then a, a body that's one way uh, to get around around this so we kind of like we went in with body number one what was the what was the um, 
loft, right? The two, the three rings, and now out of the sculpting, we're getting this handle that looks a lot more, if I turn the canvas back on, has a lot more the shape of, of that handle. So that was just something that I thought was well worth spending 10 minutes on here. And we're gonna do more of this kind of stuff, I think. But I mean, like where you're taking a, a model in the standard modeling environment where we all, you know, spend a lot of our time and we went, we go back into the sculpting environment um, and in their uh, work with, with, with that. Okay, so that was just 10 minutes I wanted to show uh, on this. Now, what I wanted to do now is I actually wanted to kind of like talk a little bit more about the sculpting of this hammer. Um, but what I'm gonna do, let me just get out of this. Uh, what I wanna do is I actually probably wanna break uh, today's live stream up to also be part of tomorrow's live stream um, because I think we can really do some neat stuff here by combining kind of what we just did combining the patch environment with the model environment so let's dive in here so um, I'm gonna start out by from scratch because that's I think most people like when I do that so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in that image of the hammer so I'm gonna go up and open a new sketch and I'm just gonna sketch on one of the planes, doesn't matter which plane. And I'm just gonna sketch a rectangle that's going to resemble kind of like the size of my hammer. So I don't know how long this hammer is, 350 millimeters, maybe by 100 millimeters, kind of like a rectangle. And this is just that when I bring the image in, this is kind of like my gauge that it's about the right size of the hammer. So when I got this, I can go up here and click Attach Canvas. We'll click on that. And uh, then we can select the face to put that canvas on. It's gonna be the same face as I did my rectangle. Again, the rectangle is just so we have an idea about how big this is gonna be because I'm selecting an image that I found online, okay? And this image is like, there's no scale to this image. You can see how small it is. It's even in an angle. <laughs> so what I can now do is I can kind of like start dragging on the scaling handle here and I can kind of like make it a little bit bigger and you will also see that it's of course at an angle so I can rotate it around here and put some kind of like that's probably pretty good um, we can we can move it drag it up so I'm just trying to find fit this hammer within somewhat within oops, that maybe a little big somewhat within that box right so I, I get close to what um, what I want that hammer to be. That nice hammer. Calling it to, uh, to my father-in-law. Okay, so, so here, this is close enough to what I'm trying to do. Uh, and oh, and then by the way, over here uh, to the right, you have canvas opacity. I like to turn it down a little bit. Uh, you can come back in here and edit these. If you don't like it, let me hit okay. So now we kind of like got this canvas. You can always go over here, you can right click over here, say edit canvas and you're right back in again. You can play kind of like uh, around with uh, what you want. Okay, so uh, we got our canvas in. Let's start um, model this up. Now, um, what we're gonna end up with in the end is uh, we're gonna go into the sculpting environment. I'm primarily gonna fix on the handle in the end uh, because I honestly, looking at the East Wing hammer, it looks like most of its top here is actually going to be modeled. So I want to combine the two. Uh, but let's just today just be in the sculpting uh, environment here. So I'm going to go up and click Create Form, and it gives me this sculpt environment pop-up, what I like. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can do, uh, can do this. You will see that you have all the sketch tools in here. But I honestly think that one of the easiest tools to use is if you go to create, there's something called face. And um, face in here, um, if you click on that, um, then you can select where on the face you wanna click. So I'm gonna click uh, right on this face here and I get it ready to, to sketch here. Now this is gonna be pretty easy, so don't worry about this. So I'm gonna select on an edge right here draw a line up and go across here, go down, that kind of like making a box around there. 
that's one box. I'm literally going to use that principle to kind of draw. And oh, by the way, see how it's kind of like you can control um, snapping to grid and layout grid down here in the bottom if you, if you want to. Um, but what I'm going to do here is literally just use a, with this face command, I'm literally just going to create um, some some rectangle shapes here. And the, the, the more the more of these you're creating, the more accurate uh, your T-spine is going to be. But of course, you can always add to them later on. So this is really not uh, that important, as you will see just in a second. Now, so again, this is the, the face command. So I'm just literally going to sketch up something like this. Um, when I come up here, where we kind of like got some transitions, try to break it down into a couple of different segments. But I'm really not too worried about how accurate this is going to be right here, to be honest with you. I'm going to just sketch over like this and close that up there. And I'm just going to continue over like that. Oh, and I can see if you're on the live stream right now, Colin Smith is, uh, is in the live stream. Now, Colin is a good friend of mine, colleague, and he's a master when it comes to this stuff. So... If you got any questions about sculpting, just overwhelm Colin. He's awesome. <laughs> All right. So I'm um, just going to wrap this up here. Something like this. So this, I think most people could, uh, could handle, right? Um, I'm going to hit OK. And when I hit OK, you will actually see that we get some sculpted lines here. Now, what I used here, just in case you missed it, was I used on the create the face command. Okay. Now, if I hide the canvas for a second and just rotate around, what I get with that face is a flat, completely flat, um, kind of flat plane of the outline of that that hammer. Nothing really, uh, really fancy at this point. Now, there's a couple of different ways that I can now, you know, add some volume to this part. One is uh, thicken. That is something we also are familiar with if you're talking about patching or surfaces. So really what this means is that I select my model and, uh, and I can add some thickness to it. So I'm just gonna drag the arrow out here um, and hit okay. And you will now see that it kind of like, it's almost like extruding something, something out like this. Uh, now, be aware of that that has a couple of different options. So the first one here is called sharp, what means you will see that it kind of like just extruded it straight out versus if I do a control Z to undo versus doing the same thing again, thicken, select the thing. Instead of doing sharp, if I select soft and do the same thing, pull it out. Now you will see that it kind of like Puts, starts putting, you know, the curvature on it. You see that? Um, so now it got like more curvature to it. It looks more like a toy hammer now, I think. Like if you were going to do like a, you know, <laughs> I don't know, zero to three year old toy, this would probably be a good, a good hammer uh, like this. Um, the other thing you can do, let me do a control Z to undo again. Other thing you can do is use the extrude function. Now that one we are also pretty familiar with. And they can actually do this kind of like the same thing. If I select the whole thing, uh, I can either extrude, uh, drag it out. And if I, if I don't have maintained crease edges on it, it will look the same as it just did with the thicken, except it's actually hollow. Um, if I turn on maintain crease edges, then it was just like, when we had the sharp edges on the thicken, uh, where we, we pulled it out. Now, um, why would you do extrude versus thicken? Um, well, one thing you will see here is that it's hollow. What, what you know, you might think is a little bit of a disadvantage, but one of the things that, you know, these sculpting gurus like Colin, who's in the live stream, um, what they like to do is they will actually prefer this and then they will go up and use a um, mirror duplicate. What means that they will select that shell they have, they will use a mirror plane 
that cuts right through it. And you see it how you see how it's got a green line cutting through it. That means that it's now a mirror of this. What means that if I select any face here and I start manipulating one face, it actually mirrors it across. So that's one of the things that um, you know, one of those tips that you many times will see, uh, you know, these guys who really know what they're talking about, uh, what they will use is the symmetry. A duplicate option. So now they only do half of it and then they're kind of like uh, working with it like that. So um, so this is all good at this point. Like, like I said, I think this is a pretty toy hammer if we just look at it like this. And that actually makes me go back to the point that, you know, um, I think that many times using a combination of sculpting and standard modeling um, can really create a better type of result. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to uh, go back and turn the canvas on. So it's kind of hard to see uh, most of the, the hammer now because I got this created here. But um, I really wanna focus on the handle and not so much of the top section of this one because the top section of this one, you know, really I don't think that, that um, the sculpting environment maybe is the best for that. I maybe want to use our standing modeling tool. Another thing that I then can do, uh, and, and you know what I've seen a lot of these people do is, you actually just window the section you don't want and hit delete on your keyboard. And then you are left with kind of like that bottom of the handle and that's perfectly, perfectly fine. So, be aware of that you can create uh, these environments and then just delete them out of there, the areas you don't want. So uh, let's tweak this a little bit in here. Now, uh, again, like I said before, that I prefer to keep as the least amount of faces on these models. Uh, the more you have, uh, the harder it can be to control. Of course, um, if I'm looking at this end here where it comes down on the hammer, goes around versus this teardrop, I might would have a little bit of an issue dragging uh, this in. So if I go in here and right click edit form and start pulling in this, um, I might get some, it might be hard. It may be not. You see how kind of like it, it, it Sometimes, you know, having just these few faces might not be the right solution. I'm just gonna control Z to undo my last few moves here. Um, what you can do is you can select the face and you can, oh, let me get out of edit form. You can right click and select the face and then you can subdivide it, meaning that you're splitting that face up. Now. We talked about sculpting before in the live stream and how it always keeps that continuous curvature on there. So as soon as I hit subdivide, the face will change. You see how it suddenly became flat. It became more flat because it now just got divided into to more segments. Now more segments gives me, uh, you know, options to um, to maybe start manipulating things uh, a little bit easier in here and start dragging uh, on the different the different areas that uh, that we want to we want to kind of like work with here so we can kind of like drag this out let's grab the last point here and kind of like actually I want a little bit of rounding on it so you can also select again the faces and we can whoops select the two faces and we can kind of like move move things up like this. Now, another thing as I'm spinning this around, be aware of that, you see what I did there? I selected these two edges, but it actually also subdivided in there. So now I kind of like have a curve on this area here. So this was maybe, you know, not the best scenario. I should have selected some more points. Again, you can also select edges and, uh, and you can start pulling in them, so you know you really have um, a lot of of flexibility, right? So I want you to know that you can really move these around 
um, and, and, and get something depending on really what, what you're looking to get. And, and a lot of this stuff here is really, uh, you know, is really practice and just kind of like um, figuring out what kind of works, uh, works for you. So we can take these and kind of like move these out a little bit. I think I'm going to go in here to like these two edges maybe. Try to move that out a little bit. Uh, you can also select and you can rotate faces too. So if you wanted to get a little bit more of a curve in like that, we can do that. Uh, that might give us some flex, oops, gives us some flexibility to, uh, to kind of get this handle in a shape you want. Um, also, maybe something that is important. Now, I was pretty lucky. You can kind of see the blue of the, the image here. Um, but don't forget that you can always add more segments. If I double click on an edge, um, right click, do edit form, and I hold down alt and I drag, then I'm actually creating a whole new segment. Versus if I just, if I don't hold down alt and I drag, then I'm dragging that one shape. But if I hold down all, I'm actually adding a whole new segment. That's like one of those uh, nice tips too. So this really gives us an opportunity to go in here and, uh, and kind of play around uh, with uh, the different shapes here, figuring out what we kind of like, what we want to do, how we get this handle to feel, feel right. Um, I think I'm just going to leave this for right here, uh, right now. So what we have now is we kind of have created a handle that I think looks decent. Maybe not the best in the world, but it's decent. Um, I'm gonna work with this, I think. I don't know if I like how these edges up here, seems like that this is kind of folding out a little bit, maybe we Bringing it in like that. Okay, so when I'm done with this right now, uh, like I said before, you could go in and you could use, um, you could go in here and use fill hole for this. So let's actually do that. So let me just double click the edge, go in here, say fill hole. Um, and if I do the maintain crease edges, you will kind of see that it's going to keep it pretty pretty tight. And then I'm going to hit OK and exit out of my uh, finished form. When I do that, um, now we are batting back in the modeling environment. Um, and you will see that because it was a closed body, because I did fill the top, uh, the fill hole command, it does come back as a body. Uh, what means that the handle for, uh, for this hammer is is pretty good. It's pretty much pretty much there. Um, you might would have a little bit more round, but that's what we're gonna want to do right now. Of course, you can always go back, right click down on a feature down here, select Edit, and you're back into the sculpting environment. Um, and we could now, uh, you know, continue to kind of work with uh, with this shape here, depending on what we what we kind of, what we want. All right, that, uh, friends, is going to finish this section of the live stream. Uh, so I hope that this uh, was kind of useful. First of all, in the beginning, so if you came in late to the live stream, in the beginning, we're talking about how you can actually take a 3D model, so something you already modeled up, convert it into a sculpting, uh, where you can then manipulate it with all the handles and then bring it bring it out um, again and you can patch it up and turn it back into to something you can work with in the modeling workspace. Um, and then here where we actually started from scratch with the canvas, we got the handle up. So tomorrow, same time, 2 p.m., we're gonna finish this model up by going back into the modeling workspace. And so we have the sculpted handle and now we're going to model up the remaining items um, in there with the standard modeling environment. So kind of like combining the two. I hope that was useful. 29 minutes within the half an hour. 
absolutely appreciate you guys uh, taking the time out of your busy day to join uh, these live streams. And um, that was uh, that was live stream number 89. Tomorrow is number 90. Tomorrow we will finish uh, this hammer. Thank you so much, everybody. Really appreciate it. I'm going to end the live, uh, the broadcast and jump into uh, the live stream. Say hi to everybody. Take care.